it's Gabrielle, and this video is a sample from StudyClicks Boost, our new rapid revision tool. Go to studyclicks.ie forward slash boost to find out more. Here we're going to be looking at quadratic functions. Now we're very familiar with the general form of the quadratic function there to be ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, you all know, if a is bigger than zero, then you get a u shape. And I always think back to that man who taught me maths in college. He used to say holding water. And if a is less than zero, so if it was minus 3x squared, we have an n shape, so it goes to spilling water. So u or an n is the two general shapes of our quadratic function. And we know about a quadratic function, they'll have their two roots, you know, or two factors leading into two roots. So in this question, express the quadratic function x squared plus 8x plus 7 in completed square form. Determine the roots and the turning point, and the turning point will be determined from the completed square form. Hence, sketch the function. So we'll have a lot going on here. So the first thing here with our function, we'll get it in completed square format, which I'm sure most of you know how to do at this stage. Now when I'm doing completed square format, I write out my first two terms, and then I go plus half the coefficient of x squared. So plus half the coefficient, that means the number in front of x, half that is 4, and then squared. So we add it on, and then we take it away. And by doing that, we haven't changed the function itself. And then throw in your plus 7. So the original three terms are the same. We write down the first two, fired on the last one at the end, and then we add it on 16, and we subtract it 16. Now, I wouldn't bother going working out 4 squared, because it's just as easy to open up my brackets and use that information that we already have. x plus 4 squared, then tidy up the last two terms. Minus 16 plus 7 gives us minus 9. So what we did there again for completing the square, write down the first two terms, plus half the coefficient of x squared. If you add it on, you take it away. Minus half the coefficient of x squared, and then throw on the last term at the end. Now to get the turning point of this, all you've got to do is change the sign in here. It gives you the minimum value, the smallest value. So in order to make x plus 4 squared the smallest possible value, to get that, we're going to have x to be minus 4. Minus 4, minus 9. And this is going to be a u-shaped function because it is x squared. So obviously the turning point is going to be a minimum turning point. It's going to be the lowest down point out of all the function. So the way I would just do that, just change the sign, whatever's in the bracket, and write the other point then. Another way you could always check if you've done differentiation or calculus, dy dx it, let it equal to zero. When you dy dx it or diff it, you get 2x plus 8 is equal to zero, 2x equal to minus 8, x equal to minus 4. So a lot easier way than completing the square, but this is the way it wanted it done in this question. And now we're going to determine the roots. Now the roots are going to be either side of our x value there. It's going to be either side of minus 4. So we're going to have 1 to the left of that, say a minus 6, and 1 to the right of that, say a 2, or minus 2. I don't know. We'll work it out. So to get the roots, we're finding where it cuts the x-axis. And it cuts the x-axis when y is equal to 0. So we're essentially just solving the equation. Factorize this whatever way you like. I'll just open up two brackets. And let each of your factors here, your x plus 1 and x plus 7, equal to 0. So your two roots are minus 1 and 0, and minus 7 and 0. Now we'll sketch the function here, using all that information, using our roots, and using our turning point, to get an idea of what this u-shaped function looks like. Now, using all that information, we'll draw a sketch of this curve. So we worked out the roots, there to be minus 1, 0, and minus 7, 0. And then we found the turning point to be minus 4, minus 9. Halfway between our two roots there we can see are minus 4, so minus 4, minus 9, put a dot. And then all we need to do is join up this curve in a nice, smooth fashion. And that's our function f of x. We already worked out f of x in completing the square format to be x plus 4 squared minus 9. But say we had the function, just making one up, x plus 4 squared minus 5. So we've changed that number at the end. What does that look like? Well, all it essentially does is it's moved up from the turning point now being minus 4 minus 9, the turning point here will be minus 4 minus 5. That's the advantage of having the quadratic expression in a completed square format. So minus 4 minus 5 is going to be your new turning point. And then to work out your roots, you'd have to solve it, let it equal to 0. You can do that yourself, but it's going to be a bit narrower. But all I'm trying to get at here is that it's moved up. Now say we had another function. 
and we have x plus 5 squared minus 5. Again, that's in the completed square format. Very, very useful because I can get the turning point. All I do is change the sign whatever's along with my x. So instead of being plus 5, it's going to be minus 5. That will ensure the smallest possible value and keep the value at the end. Minus 5, minus 5 is your turning point. Just goes in alongside that. And again, you'd have to work out your roots by solving the equation. And that red one's h of x. I've actually miscalled that yellow one to be g of x. But that's it.